So Motorola has spaffed out yet another Moto G series smartphone, the Moto G62, which packs in all kinds of clever tech, including a 50 megapixel camera sensor, 5,000 milliamp hour battery, a mighty 120 hertz display, and you've got those 5G creds as well for under 200 pounds, making it one of the most affordable, budget-friendly 5G smartphones in 2022. But is it actually good or is it just a whole heap of bollocks? Well, let's whip it on out of the box and take you on a full-on tour. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! All right, so what's in that door box? Well, naturally, you've got the Moto G62, and it actually comes pre-clad in that condom case for a bit of extra protection. You've got a tiny, weeny little power adapter. That'll be quite handy for just bunging in a case or a backpack. Only a 10 water mine, so don't expect it to be super nippy for charging. And some Type-C USB cable action as well, cracking stuff. And that's basically it, besides all the usual readme gumph and a porky pin device to get your SIM in there. And that's everything in the box, so let's check out that there phone. Now, the Moto G62 is your typical standard 6.5 inch modern smartphone, although it's reasonably narrow, so it's fairly comfortable to clutch. That's courtesy of the elongated aspect ratio, and you've got some chunky bezels surrounding that display, especially down below where you've got a proper bit of Jimmy Hill chin shenanigans, not the best. Quite flat edges as well, but rounded corners at least to help with the comfort. And at 184 grams, it's reasonably light to be fair, compared with a lot of 2022 blowers. Flip it around and you've got your bog standard plastic arse end right here with quite simple straightforward design. No patterns or frills or flare or anything, just a simple bit of Motorola branding. And at least it isn't a glossy finish here on the Moto G62. Motorola has just gone with a matte finish instead, which does an all right job of hiding greasy prints and the like, although some of them are starting to show up a bit. Like most of Motorola's recent phones, you've got a rounded camera chassis, which looks rather neat and helps to set it apart from most rivals. And that sits fairly flush with the back end of the Moto G62 as well. So when you rest the phone down on a desk or table or whatever, if you're tapping away at that surface, it won't be wobbling about all over the place. And this right here is the midnight grey model of the Moto G62. Perhaps not the most thrilling of colour choices, but you can also grab this phone in frosted blue if you want something a bit punchier, a bit more exciting. Of course, if you don't leave the bundled condom case on the Moto G62, that plastic arse end might scratch up quite easily over time. There's no mention of Gorilla Glass for the display either, and there's no pre-installed screen protector on there, so you might want to shove one on yourself just in case. But this phone is at least water repellent, so no worries if you get caught in a sudden unexpected downpour, just give it a good towel off when you get back and hopefully should be fine. And certainly no shocks when it comes to the software side of things, because you've got a lovely stock version of Android 12 here on the Moto G62. Motorola hasn't done any tinkering of its own. That is beyond chucking on its very own Moto app, of course, which does actually add some pretty bloody good features to the Android mix. So you've got some nice easy shortcuts to customise your smartphone, changing up the themes, the colours, the fonts. One of my favourites is the gestures section, which adds some really useful stuff, including that fast torch feature. You can quickly and easily take a screenshot, all of that good stuff. And then tucked away right at the very bottom are a couple of the best bits, including the game time features. Very handy if you really don't want to be disturbed while you are getting your game on, and also you can record the action, all kinds of stuff. And as well as those gaming tools, you can also fine tune the audio. And Dolby Atmos tuning is set to smart by default, so it can change up the actual output depending on what you're up to. But if you want to, you can set it to a particular feature and then also fine tune within the settings, boosting the bass, the treble, the vocals, whatever you fancy. Apart from that, it's all your standard Android features chucked on there. And thankfully, no crap where to contend with besides a couple of bits like Facebook. Ugh. Of course, Motorola isn't quite as dedicated as some of its rivals, like Nokia, for instance, when it comes to the software updates, so it'll probably get Android 13. I wouldn't expect the Moto G62 to go beyond Android 14, though, that's for sure. And security updates may not come through quite as readily as you might hope. And sadly, just a consequence of the fact that Motorola launches a lot of bloody phones. What I am pleased to see here on the Moto G62 is an edge-mounted fingerprint sensor, which so far touch wood seems perfectly responsive and accurate. No hanging about, just a quick tap and you are straight into your desktops. Got face and lock support on there as well, and a choice of 64 or 128 gigs of storage depending on how much money you spaff at Motorola. And the good news is, even if you go for the 64 gig model and find yourself running out of space pretty rapidly, you can at least bung a micro SD memory card into that second SIM slot and expand the storage by a further terabyte. And the actual display is a fairly basic IPS panel. It's a 6.5 inches, so nice and spacious. It's full HD plus resolution as well, so reasonably crisp visuals. Unfortunately, because it is IPS tech, you don't get the really nice sharp contrast, the deep blacks. 
the really punchy, poppy, vivid colours that you would get from an OLED screen. And OLED screens, you can get some budget Poco and Xiaomi blowers around this sort of price point that do offer OLED tech, so scout around if you are a massive media fan. And that said, I'd imagine most people would be perfectly happy kicking back with some YouTube or browsing their photos or whatever on this IPS panel. Only issue is it's not particularly bright, so on a very sunny day you'll struggle to see what's going on. What is more impressive is the fact that this thing maxes out at 120Hz refresh rate for a nice silky smooth experience. Particularly good when you're flicking your way around the UI or when you're using a supported app. And as you can see, the Moto G62 can scale between 60 and 120 automatically. Zero input from yourself, or you can just manually boost it all the way up to 120Hz if you fancy. But yes, this selfie cutout orifice up top is quite sizable, so it does kind of intrude on the action a fair bit when you do go full screen. And here on the Moto G62, you've got a stereo speaker setup, but is it actually any good? Let's find out. Every other smartphone from 2022 can get right in the bin, and then we can hoi that bin in the sea, and then just set fire to the sea. I gotta say, that's actually pretty decent on that top volume. It packs quite a punch. It's certainly very, very loud indeed, and the quality ain't too bad either, not particularly tinny. Still very much best reserved for just kicking back with some YouTube or whatever rather than actual music of course but if you do want to listen to some music the good news is you do have a headphone jack squirreled away down here on the bottom end of the Moto G62. And if you do want to go wireless there's a good bit of Bluetooth 5.1 support. So let's do a neat little side shuffle onto performance and I wouldn't exactly call the Moto G62 a powerhouse as you'd probably expect at this sort of budget £200 price point. It's powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 480 Plus chipset and that's backed here in my review unit by just 4 gigs of RAM, 4 measly gigs. The benchmarking scores aren't too bad to be fair but multitasking isn't this thing's strong suit so you'll find that apps do close down fairly regularly in the background. But you know what, just for your everyday stuff such as messaging, web browsing, streaming media, things like that, it does the job absolutely fine. And you do actually have a tasty bit of Adreno 619 GPU action as well, which ain't bad for gaming, although you will want to stick to your PUBGs and your Call of Duty mobiles, definitely stay clear of any tougher stuff like Genshin Impact. Call of Duty played absolutely fine, I found the screen was responsive enough to make me sort of reasonably combative. But that said, I did notice that the back end of the Moto G62 did get rather toasty after just one or two games as well. So you're not going to want to do a lot of gaming, lots of, you know, one hour, two hour sessions on this thing. And yes, you do have that aforementioned game time mode as well, which you can pop up onto the screen, like so just the quick tap of that icon. And this offers up all those great features right there in game. You can record the action, your mad skills, you can take a screenshot, you can block notifications and calls, buggy right off. And as the name of this smartphone is technically the Moto G62 5G, yes, you do have the built-in 5G smarts as well, and the Wi-Fi connectivity also seems up to snuff. And if you want a smartphone that's not going to die on you halfway through a ruddy day, well, the Moto G62 will certainly suffice because it's got a 5,000 mAh capacity battery, and that combined with that energy-efficient Snapdragon chipset and the stock Android experience means all-day play, no worries. A single charger will get you hours and hours of screen on time, no worries, no matter what you're up to, whether you're streaming media, whether you're doing a good bit of gaming, just not for too long, obviously. Don't want scorchy fingers. However, when it is time to power back up again, you're going to want to leave that charger plugged in for quite some time because the Motorola G62 only supports 15 watt wired charging and you only get a 10 watt charger bundled in the box as well, which is even slower. And of course, there's no wireless charging because there never is at this sort of price. And so, regrettably, kiddies, we are nearing the end of this Motorola Moto G62 unboxing, but just enough time to take a good old squint at that camera tech. Your primary sensor is a 50 megapixel effort. You've got the usual Motorola AI smarts on board when you launch that camera app. It's going to just help you to get the best possible shot, depending on, obviously, what your subject is. And for a Tinder pound shooter, it's not bad at all. Of course, you'll have to make sure that your subject is well lit and as still as possible if they're not well lit. You get a reasonable amount of detail packed in there. There is a good bit of pixel binning going on, which just helps to brighten things up a little bit when the conditions aren't quite perfect. But if you want to max out that resolution, make use of every megapixel where there is an ultra resolution mode tucked away in the extra bonus settings. And that's joined by Motorola's usual spots color. You've got night vision for your low light shots, all that good stuff. In fact, the Moto G62 also boasts a pro mode if you want to get all hands on with the likes of the white balance, the ISO levels, etc. And you can shoot in raw format in this mode. As well as that 50 megapixel primary sensor, you've also got an 8 megapixel secondary ultra wide angle shooter, which as you can see there offers a more pulled back view of the action. 
Don't expect as much detail in these picks and of course the colors take a hit as well, but it's there if you want a different viewpoint. And then if you want to get super close to your subject, you've also got a macro lens. And when it comes to video recording as well, the Moto G62, again, pretty limited. You don't have 4K resolution recording here, only full HD at either 30 or 60 frames per second. So don't expect your footage to be absolutely packed with detail. Things will look a bit grainy when beamed up to a big screen, but it's fine for simple shareable clips and everyday home movies. And then last up, flip around to the front and you've got a 16 megapixel selfie shooter housed in that little orifice up top. And again, just be mindful when you're shooting selfies with the Moto G62 because they're all limitations. Don't snap yourself against any super bright skies, for instance, and in particularly low light environments, it doesn't exactly thrive either. And yay, verily, you can shoot full HD resolution footage on the Moto G62 using that 16 meg selfie snapper. Again, same limitations. You know, if you're doing it indoors, it's going to look a little bit grainy and cruddy if the lighting is particularly cack. The audio pickup seems absolutely fine though. So that right there in a nutshell is the Motorola Moto G62, a budget-friendly smartphone costing under £200 with some limitations of course. It's only IPS screen tech, not particularly bright, not particularly sharp contrast and not one of the best at this price point for gaming either, although performance is well up to snuff for everything else. The battery life is fantastic as well and you've got lots of great features like a headphone jack and micro SD memory card support which you don't find on more expensive handsets. Now, if you are looking for a budget-friendly blower under £200, I have rounded up my pick of the very best right now in summer 2022, so go check that out. It'd be great to hear your thoughts on the Moto G62 down below, especially if you've actually been using it as your full-time smartphone. Please do plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell, and have yourself a ruddy great rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.